Okay, guys, thank you for jumping on uh, tonight. You you wouldn't believe what I've had to do to um, to set this thing up. Like entrepreneur issues, having um, smartphones with zero battery, and then um, like I've got my phone plugged in, and then it's balanced on basically the sugar the sugar pot, the coffee pot, and the teapot on. You know those grill things that go around the microwave on three legs, like that go in the mic, and then the phone's balanced on that. Um, so it's absolutely carnage. That's why I've been taking so long. So yeah, happy new year, guys. If I've not said that to you already, probably said it last week. If you're on, if not, then happy new year. Uh, just a little update for you guys on where I'm at right now. I'm, um, I am. What day are we on? The 12th. So I am 12 days without alcohol. Uh, my head is starting to shrink. The dark eyes are going a, a little bit lighter, which is good. Uh, training pretty much three to five times a week. So absolutely smashing it in the gym. Feel incredible. And, you know, it's only 12 days in, but I've started to get opportunities. are starting to show themselves to me even more. I've done some pretty cool things today with things that I'm really, really excited about business-wise. So I just think when you really, really put good stuff into your body and good stuff into your mind, which I talk about all the time, then then good stuff is more likely to happen to you. So, as I said last week, um, on the, I think the, the live was called something like 10 ways to make 2018 your year or something like that. If you haven't seen it, just scroll down the news feed on my page and you'll be able to watch that one again. Um, by the way, if you don't get my emails, sign up. They're just free. I send them out every single day. So it's John Hollowati Mentor dot com <clears throat> i think it's always important if you want to be successful at something then you need somebody to mentor you hey whether it's me or somebody else it doesn't really matter but find somebody that inspires you and someone that you can aspire to be and, and take the best bits from them but what i said last week was 10 ways how to make 2018 your year and the first thing that i went through was the the art of goal setting now what i did is i briefly touched on each thing this week, I want to go into the first one in more detail. So there's going to be another nine lives based around this every single Thursday night. You know, one of the things that I talk about all the time is being consistent. Well, if I'm not being consistent, then how the hell can I expect you guys to be consistent? Um, so it's up to me to start sticking to what I'm saying that I'm going to do. So every single Thursday, you will get a live from me, whether you like it or not. If you don't like it, then... Go and watch um, a, a giraffe giving birth or something like that on one of the other Facebook videos that are out there. All right, let me move into it. I'm going to get rid of the comments. Thank you so much for jumping on. Thank you for watching. Share this with anybody that you think will get value, anybody that is you know, into personal development, anybody that's got a goal, anybody that is you know, trying to achieve something this year, whether it's business, whether it's fitness, whether it's relationship stuff, whether it's mindset, whatever. I'm going to be touching on all that stuff tonight. But for now, I am going to get rid of the comments. And yes, thank you, Lynn McDonald. I haven't worn a shirt this year. So there you go. That's me. Um, I have got shorts and flip-flops on underneath here, though. So it's kind of half and half. All right. Let me get rid of these comments. Then I can move move on to the next bit. All right, guys. So the art of goal setting. I think the first thing that you need to really do is pat yourself on the back because you are actually goal setting. I mean, some people go throughout their whole lives never ever setting a goal, never really aiming to become something or aiming to do something, you know, whether it's materialistic or lifestyle or holidays, you know, they might have the same holiday every single year, they might earn the same amount of money every single year, they might drive the same car for the last 20 years, um, and that's fine if that's where you want to be, but a lot of people don't understand what goal setting is, they don't understand how to do it and the importance of doing it, and Let's think about going back to when we were growing up as kids. We all had goals, like we needed to get a certain amount of marks out of a test. We needed to learn how to tie our shoelaces. We needed to learn how to swim, read and write. And then as you go into the next phase of learning, you're in a secondary school and you, you're learning different languages. You've got to pass exams and that kind of stuff. Then you get out of school and you've got to learn how to drive. So we always kind of set goals, whether we realize that we're doing it or not. I think the more conscious you are about setting goals, then the better you can become and the more success you can have going forward. So the art of goal setting is simple. It's knowing exactly what you want. And what you probably want to do is, is pause this if you're watching it on record or re-watch it back and, and do this exercise. Like Get really, really specific 
on the things that you want from your life. I mean, it's no good just saying I want to earn 50 grand a year or I want a mansion in Beverly Hills. Like you need to get really, really specific on what you want and why you want it. Because a lot of the times people set goals because they think that they should. They think they should go for that certain thing and they don't really want that stuff. So guess what happens? They set a goal that they don't really want to achieve and then they don't achieve it. So then in the mind, they then think, well, I can't really set goals and achieve things. So they never either do it again. And then they kind of create that vicious cycle of never really setting anything to aim for and then never, ever achieving anything, then starting to feel bad about never achieving anything. So here's the things that you need to get specific about. And this is a really cool exercise. And I'm just taking you through some of the notes that I've done tonight. And, you know, I want to... I wanted to do this on the big screen and draw it out, so maybe I'll do another training based on this for you guys. But the first thing I want you to write down on your list is materialistic stuff. Now, it's okay to want materialistic things. There is nothing wrong with that. Don't let anybody tell you that it isn't a cool thing to do because if you want a new car, then go and get it. It's materialistic. It doesn't matter but it does matter to you. If it makes you feel good, then it's worth doing it. If you want a new coat, then it makes you feel good, go and get it. If it's a new watch, you know, a new house somewhere, whatever, find the materialistic things that you want and it's okay to have those as goals. You know, one of my goals was to get a convertible car as I was building my business, then later on it was to get a Range Rover and you know what, there's not really much difference. All cars have got four wheels pretty much. Um, but it feels good when you, you achieve something, when you want something, when you see somebody else have it and you think, well, if they can get it, then I can get it. What's the difference between me and them? So I'd be looking at cars, houses, watches, shoes, bags, whatever. You know, the girls love the bags and the shoes. So write down whatever it is that you want. Some of these things that are going to put a smile on your face. Hey, let me tell you that happiness isn't based around the amount of handbags and shoes that you've got or the car that you drive. But it is something to tick off and it is something to go for. And when you achieve it, you might actually think, you know what, this isn't actually what I wanted, but I enjoyed the journey of getting it. And that's the, the that's kind of the perfect scenario, I guess. It's like saying, hey, I thought I'd be a lot happier when I drove this car. Like, I am really happy, but actually I preferred the journey and the things that I've achieved and the way that I've grown as a person to get that materialistic stuff. But it's okay to want materialistic things. Don't you ever let anybody talk you out of getting something that you want, that you've worked hard for. The next thing that you want to do is make another list and call that fun. So this is the thing that I'm big on. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's your fitness, whether it's your business, whether it's your relationships. If you ain't having fun, then you ain't doing it the right way. So what fun stuff do you want to put on there? Holidays, golf trips, um, Maybe you charter a boat for a few days and you go off somewhere doing something cool. Maybe it's a party. Maybe it's a trip down to the theatre in London or just a meal out. Like You've got to write down the stuff that is fun. Fun things that you want to do with your money and fun things that you want to do this year. Um, could be ice skating, could be snowboarding, could be whatever. Whatever it is that you're into. Like What are the things that light you up and put more of that fun stuff in? Because... That's where the rewards come in. The rewards come in from getting some of the materialistic stuff. The rewards come in from having the experiences. I'm really, really big on experiences. I call it deathbed moments. You know, when you lay there on your deathbed, you're not going to say, oh, I had an amazing life. I, I drove a Range Rover, right? No one gives a shit, right? And you certainly won't. But what you will do is you'll say, wow, I had an amazing life. I got to do this and I got to do that. And we got to go and do these cool things. And this is all the next stuff that I'm going to talk about. So... The next thing is relationships. What are your relationship goals with your partner, with your kids, with your parents, with your friends? What are the things that you want to do with those relationships going forward? So the three, first three things are materialistic stuff, fun stuff, relationships. The next thing is health. What are your health goals? What are your business and your mindset and your fitness goals? Like for me, I'm, and I might be crazy doing this, but... I've entered the CrossFit Open, um, that starts at the end of February, it's really difficult, there's like box jumps in there and I'm too short to get up on the box and stuff so they have to turn it on the side, I'm sure people are laughing their heads off at that and visualising it and it is pretty hilarious but I have felt the fittest I've felt in a long time and I know when this, this kind of competition kicks in, I'll be the fittest that I've ever been in my life so one of my goals this year is to drop a load of body fat, to get lean again, um, 
like I used to be in 2013 and to build my fitness and, and actually have something to train for. And that is all going to lead into the mindset stuff. Some of my mindset things is to, to learn some new skill, skill sets around building my business, um, to learn some new ways of, of kind of attracting more people in, in my, my business and working with the right people and that kind of thing. So growing my mindset, reading a book a week is something that I'm, I'm aiming to do as well. Also, learning another language is up there for me. I'd love to learn Spanish this year. I've said it a few years in the past. And I've never actually got around to doing it. So this is the year to implement that stuff. But if you ain't looking after your body and you're drinking all the time and you're, you're kind of suppressed and subdued on the weekend, then you're never going to get all that other stuff going. So you've just got to be careful what you do with your time and where you put your energy. But it's perfect to have some health goals. And then the final one for me is purpose goals. Be really, really purpose driven. Who are you trying to help? What legacy are you trying to leave? So is it stuff that with charity work, I did some cool stuff last year with some charities and, and helping some guys out with that kind of thing. And I'd like to do more of that stuff. It may be not even charity work. It may just be helping somebody else, like paying it backwards or paying it forwards, as people say, you know, passing the message on. You know, I, I see it like we're all on this. And this is why I do what I do with these lives and why I'm really enjoying it. It's almost like we're walking up a mountain and we know that there's like ice there and there's like a there's a glacier there that people could fall down and there's the potential of an avalanche there and it's our job because we're we're leading the the charge if you will to let the people know that are coming up behind us there's a better route be careful of that don't do this so it's almost like we're trying we're making the mistakes and we're learning the lessons to pass that on to other people so they don't have to and that's that's the great thing about what we do in terms of building businesses and helping other people paying it forward so those are the five things materialistic stuff which is cool fun relationships health and purpose those are the things that you really need to get on top of when you're writing your goals so maybe go back and and spend some time on that the next thing you need to do is create a story all right and what i mean by that is our minds respond to stories so if you can kind of conjure up a story in your mind of what your perfect day or perfect month would look like so and again you can't do this now because you're obviously listening to me ramble on but when you get a minute once you've written down your goals, you can kind of piece these things together where you say, okay, so I get up in the morning and I get into my Ferrari, for example, and I drive to my friend's house and we catch up for a coffee in the morning and I take my friend out, you know, for breakfast. And then, you know, I get to pick my kids up from nursery and then I go to the gym and I work on my body and my fitness. And, and then at the end of the day, I'm doing something related to writing my book that is going to inspire other people. So you've got to kind of conjure up this story in your mind of how you want your, your ideal day, your ideal kind of week to look. And then play that movie. And this is something I did when I was, when I was on the come up, when I was kind of building my way through the rankings in my business. And, and going from somebody that sat in the audience to somebody that was on stage speaking in front of the audiences, I got really good at playing movies in my mind about me getting where I wanted to be. So I would actually, I could close my eyes and watch myself in a movie, being on stage, cracking jokes, everybody laughing, because obviously I'm hilarious. Um, so doing all that kind of stuff, like visualizing the movie of you driving the car. I remember when I got, um, and this just touches on the materialistic stuff, I remember when I was going for, um, to get this Mercedes, E-Class convertible, white, beautiful, beautiful car, and I wanted a convertible, and my parents were like, why would you want a convertible when we live in Manchester, it rains all the time, you'll never get to use it, all that kind of stuff, and I was like, you know what, when I get this car, there is going to be a heat wave, I guarantee it, and uh, it actually happened, and I used to visualize myself driving around through my town with the top down, with the tunes up, now I'm not saying I can change the weather, because I can't, but what I'm trying to say is, guys, when you visualize that stuff, when you play those movies, when you repeat that story over and over and over and over again, your brain doesn't know the difference between whether it's real or not. So you start to feel like you've already got it. And then whatever it is, whatever you believe, the universe, God, you know, 
coincidence starts to put things in your way to make that happen. You just got to believe it and go for it. Trust me, it works. It works for me. It'll work for you as well. And there's probably people watching this that could write comments now in the, in the stuff below where it's worked for them. Okay, so you've done your story bit. Now what I want you to do is kind of break your goals up. People say I always have a five-year plan. I think with your five-year plan, things can change so much along the way that... There's no point really getting too specific about five years later on down the line. Like life changes so quickly. So what I would say is just create a five-year vision. So it's just a little vision of what you want your life to be. So it might be to be able to get up when I want, to work where I want, to help the people that I want to help, and to do what I want to do and, and, and live my life on my terms. It could be something along those lines. And you can kind of see it in your mind. But you don't need to get really, really specific on that vision. It just needs to be there, floating around in your, in your kind of mind, mind's eye is what I call it. The third year game plan. Okay, so what do you want in third years? You need to get a little bit clearer on this vision. So where you're going to be living maybe, um, you know, it might not be specific. It might not have to be the specific town or the specific country, but it might be right. We want to be living in, in the sunshine by the coast or want to be living up in the mountains by a ski resort or something like that. I want to be, you know, getting up at this time and doing this with my day. So you get a little bit clear on the third year thing. Then the 12 year thing, you narrow it down even more. And this is where you start to set targets. So you start to set targets for this year. The amount of income that you want to be earning, the time freedom that you want to have. Maybe it's about reducing a day at work. Maybe it's about going part-time at work. Maybe it's about changing your, you, you know, your job, getting out of that and building your lifestyle business, whatever it is. Get really kind of target-driven on that one. And then I would break, and I used to be a big fan of 90-day game plans, but actually I've changed my perspective on that. And the reason for this is, when you run for 90 days, you kind of then stop and do nothing and, and kind of sit there and admire what you've done. And before you know it, that time's gone. So you've done 90 days on and then you end up doing 90 days off or 90 days really committed and then slowing down. I, I'm only talking from experience. This is what I've done in the past. Um, I, I did 90 days no drinking for like the last three years. And what ended up happening was I went back to my old behaviors. So I actually think you need to extend it. So I'm doing now 120 day game plans and I'm breaking that down into sections. So I'm splitting it up obviously into four 30 day blocks and I'm measuring everything that I do every 30 days. So obviously we're on the first run of that. Um, 120 days times three is pretty much a year over with. So you've got to make those blocks count, the beginning, the middle, and the end, and then you can kind of diagnose what you need to work on more, what you need to put more time and energy into, are you working smart, are you working hard, and obviously see if you're ticking off those things, that's why it's so important to write this stuff down, because there's no better feeling than ticking off all the goals that you've achieved. Okay, so some more tips, I want you to get realistic, I, and, and I hate that word, but I also kind of love that word. Because people will say like dream big, dream massive and all that kind of stuff, which works if you're putting it into your, into your vision. But then if you're setting yourself up for failure, then what's the point? Because if you're halfway there and you're nowhere near, most human beings give up. They're like, it's too far, I can't do it, so they stop. And the easiest way I can explain it is your very first exercise session, your very first time in the gym. And you'll see it right now. There'll be loads of people in the gym in January absolutely smashing themselves to bits for like they, they haven't been to the gym all year in 2017 and then they decide that they're going to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and guess what happens on Saturday they crash, they get a cold, they run down their immune system shot, they've pushed themselves far too much, they start feeling terrible, then they start binging on bad food and then they feel like a failure so what I would say guys is set yourself up for something that is you know, it's something that you've got to reach towards. It's got to be something that you're stretching to rather than something that is way, way out there that you can't really achieve in that short space of time. It's all right to have the big vision for later on. I've got that for me. Don't you worry. But what I'm doing is I'm chunking these goals up and I'm saying, right, let's break it down. And it's that, it's that great phrase like, how do you eat an elephant? You can't eat an elephant in one go. You have to eat it one bite at a time. Not that I've ever eaten an elephant, but you know what I'm trying to say. Um... So build it over time. Here's something else you need to get really good at. And I think we're, especially in the UK, I don't know what everyone else is like watching this around the world, but 
we don't celebrate our wins enough. Like when you do something really good, really productive and you've been a success, like shout it from the rooftops, tell people about it, like pat yourself on the back, celebrate, do something that, you know, rewards what you've done. And uh, you can do that on a day-to-day -day basis, like having a, a tick list of the things that you've got to do and celebrate three or four wins that you've had every single day, whether it's eating the right foods, whether it's reading a chapter in your book, whether it's writing a chapter in your book, whether it's speaking to a new person about your opportunity or a new customer, whether it's getting in the gym and training hard, like celebrate those wins, celebrate the things that you've done because it's all those little things that add up over time that make you hit the big one as your 12 months is up and then you go again and then you're into your three year, you know, you clear a vision and then you're there at the five year point where everything's kind of condensed and got a lot more specific and a lot more clear and you're like, wow, I am living that life I set to live five years ago. Um, tick sheet touched on that. I would also say get really, really good at writing your schedule. This is something that I'm trying to improve this year, like scheduling in reading time. Rather than just say I'm going to read a chapter a day, say, you know what? Between 9 a.m. and 10 is reading time. My phone's off. I've made myself a coffee. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to read for one hour. Or exercise time. Between 1 and 2 p.m. in the afternoon is my training time. Nothing is getting in the way of that. So you've got to really get good at scheduling this stuff in. Obviously, there's going to be bumps in the road and curveballs that are thrown at you where you might have to drop things certain days. But if you make a conscious effort to do that stuff, I guarantee you're more likely to do it than if you didn't consciously make that effort to do it. It's all about structure and human beings, as we know, love structure. The next thing I would say is break down your IPAs, your income producing activities. Those are the things that should come first on your list. Now, obviously things might get in the way of that, but I would always be saying like, what's more important, doing a call to somebody who's interested in your business or doing a call with a potential customer or putting the bins out before the you know the bin man comes. So don't let little things cheat you out of big opportunities. You've got to get really good at saying these are the big things that are going to take me where I'm going to get to. Um, doing my makeup in the morning or washing my hair or you know uh, speaking to a mate who I haven't spoken to for a while. I can put that off because I've got a to sort these IPAs out. These are the things that are going to take me towards that goal. That's why it's really clear that you get clear on what you want. You have to know what you want because when those kind of curveballs come in and decisions have to be made, you have to say, right, this is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Nothing is getting in the way of these income producing activities. These are the key three building blocks that I have to do every single day to get me where I want to be. And it, it could be your fitness stuff. That could have a massive impact on your goals. So it might be that you've got to train or it could be your cold calling or your cold messaging session in the day. Like if you say to yourself, I'm going to cold message 50 people about my products or my opportunity or go and create 50 relationships or I'm going to write 50 pages of my book, then don't let anything get in the way of that. You know, it's all about these income producing activities. Because it's 120 days, I would always do a weekly or a 10 day evaluation. So obviously 120 days broken down is 12 10 day runs so every 10 days what have you done what worked what do you need to change what have you done what worked what did you need to ch change like and you can almost project it i've done this a little bit with my weight loss so i've wrote my weight down on week one and then i wrote what i've lost already so it's like three pounds in in 10 days so i've lost three pounds in 10 days so then i've gone okay so if i can lose three pounds every 10 days this is where i'm going to end up in 120 days so you could do the same thing with your business, whether it's customers or, you know, that kind of thing. You're going to know when you look at it, wow, if I just stick to this, this is how many new customers I'm going to have brought in. This is how, how big my team is going to exp have expanded. This is how much turnover our business is going to generate if we keep sticking to the plan. And then obviously you can go back and scrub out the predicted result and put your own in the actual result hey sometimes it's going to be a lot better than what you predict as well because we all know what happens when you start to compound okay i would also just say because there's a lot of people that do this business that have got families and stuff like that and that are in this kind of um entrepreneurial world it is okay to be selfish because you're not really being selfish it's just that they don't see it that way 
So when you've got to jump on a call, when you're watching this live, when you're cancelling certain things, you're doing it for the greater good. You're doing it for your family, but they probably don't even see it yet. You know, when I was um, building my business, when I was living at my parents' house, my mum and dad used to say to me, can you keep the noise down? It's two o'clock in the morning. You know, your voice note in your own calls, you, you, you know, you're being really noisy. Like, why are, you, why are you staying up working so late? You've got to be up at six. What are you doing? You're going to get run down. You're going to get tired and blah, blah, blah. All that stuff went on for years and years, right? They didn't see why I was doing it. They probably thought I was being a little bit selfish. They probably thought I was being a little bit crazy. But then fast forward to the vision of what I had of taking them away on holiday and... I can tell you now when I was in a helicopter with my parents and I sat around and looked at my my mum smiling, it was like, wow, it was worth it. It was worth every single effort. They don't probably think or see all that stuff that went on in the past, but I remember why I did it and I also remembered why I was doing it at the time because I was playing that movie in my mind of, you know, I can imagine us all being in Canada, doing an amazing family holiday together, taking it back to the relationship and fun stuff when you're setting your goals. So it all kind of links back and forth. Okay, nearly there guys. Get accountable, write this stuff down, tell the right people. This is something that I learned. I think I told a lot of the wrong people what I was doing. Luckily for me, it motivated me when they said it was bullshit, it was never gonna work, I wouldn't be able to do it, all that kind of stuff. When it didn't start getting, when it didn't work the way I wanted it to, when they were saying I told you so, if you are not motivated by that stuff, then pick and choose who you tell your goals to. Because when you have your rough times and your down times and it isn't going so smoothly, they might put you down. Now, if that doesn't motivate you, that's only going to suppress you and make you feel bad. So why would you tell them in the first place? If they ain't going to support you, then why tell them, right? Go and find the people that will support you. So tell the right people. For me, a bit of negativity motivates the hell out of me. So I don't mind if someone says you can't do it or you won't do it or it's too difficult. I'm like, hey, give me a chance. I'll give it my best shot and I'll prove you wrong. And luckily enough, we've proved a lot of people wrong. Um, run your own race. Comparison kills more dreams than anything, I would say. Because what comparison does is it leads to doubt. You start comparing yourself to somebody else, there's no point doing it. It's, it's like comparing um, a tortoise to an eagle. Like, they're both animals, but one crawls on the floor really slowly and lives in a little shell. The other one flies about hunting mice. Like, what's the point in comparing them? Like, they're totally different. There's no point. So, don't compare yourself to anybody else. You've just got to run your own race. You're only competing with you. You're only trying to achieve your goals for you. Nobody else. Get inspired by someone else, but don't compare yourself to somebody else. Um, because I've, I've seen it over the years where people that were doing really, really well and actually getting some traction and doing well for where they were and for their story and for their goals, then have gone, oh, that person's further ahead than me, so I must be doing rubbish. So I'll stop doing what I'm doing and I'll slow down. When actually if they hadn't a look left and they hadn't a look right, even though that's right and that's left, um, if they hadn't have done that, they would have basically carried on getting where they wanted to be. They would have stuck to the plan. So go for it, guys. You really must stick to your own race. Run it. Don't look left. Don't look right. Try and, you know, if you're running against anyone, you're running against yourself. Okay, this is probably the most important important line of today's live and it's this get comfortable hopefully i can say it right without messing it up get comfortable with people being uncomfortable with you so i'll say it again get comfortable with people being uncomfortable with you and what i mean by that is when you start reaching for these goals when you start striving when you start running towards things when you start saying hey i'm not going to come out this this friday because i'm working on my book sorry i'm not going to come out on saturday because I've got to build my business, like I've got a four hour window and I have to do this stuff, it's more important to me, I'm not being rude, we'll, we'll celebrate when I've done this. People are going to get uncomfortable with your decisions, they're going to be like, you've changed, why are you doing this, we used to have a good time, hey, it happens when you give up drinking, why are you not drinking? You can have a good time, like, you'll be fine tomorrow, we've all been there, right, where people have tried to talk us out of stuff, do you know why they do it? Because it makes them feel uncomfortable. So you have to get comfortable with that. You have to get comfortable with the fact that it's okay. It's all right for people to not understand why you're doing it. But whatever you do, don't let them talk you out of it because 
They're your goals when you go right back to why you're doing it. You replay that movie in your mind. When that seed of doubt drops in and you go, should I have this drink? It's fine. Yeah, she's probably right. You know, it's not going to make a difference. Or, or, you know what, I'll put off writing the book or I'll put off making these phone calls and I'll watch this TV show or we'll do that. All this stuff compounds. You don't know the negative side of doing that. So what you have to do, guys, is replay that movie. And this is why you've got to get really clear right at the beginning of this live, like I said, because when all this stuff adds up, this is when you're going to need those tools that you've learned tonight or you've been reminded of because a lot of you guys know this stuff already. This is when those tools come into impact. This is where you go, right, this is the time to use that movie. This is where it's going to get difficult. This is where I say, actually, you know what, mate? I can't make it this weekend because I've got two chapters left to write of this book and I've got to do it. Or I've got five calls to make. I have to do it and we'll celebrate when we've got something to celebrate. So, guys, that is it from me. I'm going to leave you with what one line. You know what? You've got one life. Go and live it. Please do it to the best of your ability. Please share this video with anybody that you think may be interested. Just go out there and smash it, guys. Live with no regrets because you may come back as a pigeon. So make sure you make the most of this one. Stay cool. Have a great week.